Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? Here on Behind the Star, we share stories about the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Central Florida's largest law enforcement agency. From forensics to dispatch to the deputies on patrol, we'll talk to the brave men and women who protect our community. This is Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to Behind the Star, the official podcast of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I am John Busdecker, the official storyteller of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And every week I thank our listeners and I'm going to do it this week as well because we're about six weeks into Behind the Star. This is our sixth episode and we've already had more than a thousand downloads. So we're really proud of that. We're really excited. Thank you so much for listening and sharing and telling people about it. I actually had a officer with the Orlando Police Department talk to me today, and he said, hey, I've heard your podcast. I really like it. So there's a lot of folks out there listening, so thank you so much. But I'm really excited about this week's episode because this is a topic that you don't always think about when you're driving around Central Florida. You may see them in their fluorescent yellow vest, and you, you might not think, how do they end up at that crosswalk? So we're talking with Bertus Negron, the school crossing guard coordinator here at the sheriff's office. Welcome to Behind the Star. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you. And, and so uh, we wanted to talk to you, or I wanted to talk to you this week in particular because school started in Orange County on Monday. And so I'm sure you saw kids out and, and crossing guards out. So we wanted to sort of dive a little deeper into uh, the crossing guards and, and who they are and why they do this job and, and maybe some of the some safety tips when you're driving around them. So I want to start off, Bertus, by asking how many crossing guards are there in Orange County? Roughly, I don't need exact numbers, but roughly how many are there? Well, we have 454 crossing guards throughout Orange County, unincorporated Orange County. And so they're, they're all over the county? Are they just in the city or how does that work for us? Well, we hire all unincorporated Orange County and then the cities, municipalities, the police departments will hire their own and uh, train them. Okay, so you know, it, for somebody who's lived here about 10 years, uh, you know, I've driven around, you, you see the crossing guards around schools, uh, you know, elementary schools, maybe high schools and middle schools. Why don't you talk about how do they determine where crossing guards go? Because you think about there's so many roads here in Central Florida and they all don't have crossing guards. So there has to be a way to determine uh, why a crossing guard goes here and not there. How does that work? Well, so it works with the, you know, the school, the school are the ones that develop this, uh, the or construct the schools and they do a zoning so anyone who is within two miles of the school will have to walk so they have to create a safe walking route to school and then they figure out okay they're going to cross here we're going to need a crossing guard here crossing guard there and then they ask the county to evaluate that crossing once they evaluate the crossing they have a certain formula they use and whatever dictates that it's a crossing guard is warranted then they go ahead and let me know and then i put a crossing guard they determine whether it's one guard two guards three guards depending on how many legs of the intersection they will be crossing okay so if it's a if it's a bigger street i assume when i say bigger street a larger uh street across you might have one or two or even more crossing guards correct. at that one correct okay all right and so um because i live i kind of live i live in orange county in, in unincorporated orange county uh, near College Park, near the city of Orlando, and there's a few around there where there's one crossing guard. Now, I have no idea how many kids actually use that, but determining or depending on this sort of um, equation that you, you talked about, there is a certain amount of kids or a certain amount of danger at that crosswalk, so that's how they determine it. Yeah, they look at how many kids cross, what is the traffic volume, does it have sidewalks on both sides, is it a control traffic signal intersection all those things are taken into consideration how close it is close is it to the school etc cetera, etc cetera. all right and so you were telling me before we started that a lot of people think that crossing guards work for the school district but that's not true no they work for the orange county sheriff's office we're proud to have them as part of our team uh they work for the for the orange county sheriff's office the other misconception is that they don't get paid yes they do they get paid they're not volunteers they're under our florida retirement system they get certain perks like perfect attendance bonus, 
recruiting bonus. So we treat our crossing guards pretty good. As we should, because they do a lot of work and they, they keep our kids safe. But I want to go back to that first part. Do you have any idea? Is, is that how it is all across the state? Do, does the sheriff's office generally employ the crossing guards or is it usually the, the school district? The majority of them are either Orange County. Uh, I'm sorry, not Orange County, the county um, department or the municipality police department. Okay. So, yeah, so but they, there's a few places where they have like, I don't know, it's really strange at traffic engineering. Some will have the school board will have them, but the majority is either county sheriff or municipality police. So if you live in Orange County, unincorporated Orange County, mm-hmm. and, and that that's where the school crossing guards, they would work for the sheriff's office. Yeah, and they're then, housed here. But if you worked like, in, or if you lived in Winter Park or Apopka, would it be their municipality? Yeah, Apopka okay. Police Department or Winter Garden okay. Winter Park. Yeah. All right. So, so to that second point that you said, a lot of people who don't know better, uh, they think that the school crossing guards are volunteers. That's not true. That is not true. They get paid, and like I said, all the little benefits that we offer, I don't know what other departments offer, but I know what we offer, and uh, we also do some training. Um, There's a six-hour training, orientation. They do a a background check on them. They do um, a phone interview. They do... um, uh, the other thing they do is a physical to make sure that they're physical agile enough to do the job to be moving in and out of traffic quickly to allow uh, drivers to resume um, and get the kids across safely. All right. So we're going to we're going to unpack all of those things. Let's start at the beginning with the pay. How, what does it start at? What's the so starting pay? the guards normally work two hours a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and they get paid thirteen fifty two an hour. OK, so so is who, who's your typical person that applies to be a crossing guard? Because, I mean, let's be honest, it's not a full-time job. It's it's something that, like you said, it, maybe it's something like an extra spending money or maybe you're retired. Is that is that usually who applies? Yes, we got a lot of retirees, but we have a lot of stay-home moms that have kids that go to school that stay home to wait for them. So they go out and do the crossing. We have some college kids that work there schedule around the crossing guard time so that they can do school and get a little bit of extra money. Um, so we got a variety of people that do work for us. Um, but you know, that's basically it, you know, that, that amount of yeah. people. Yeah. So, so what time, what time do they got to start? What, what's your shift like? Well, most shifts are eight to nine. 2.45 to 3.45, and on Wednesdays, 1.45 to 2.45. The later uh, uh, schedule is the middle school because we only do elementary and some middle school. Okay, so we, no high school. They can, no they can cross school. the street they're on their adult. own. They're like adults, right? So <laughs> they're like adults. They're like adults. <laughs> Except when they do stupid things <laughs> and they're like kids. But you're right. So so it's only elementary and middle school. Mm-hmm. So the middle school is a little later. It's 8.45 to 9.45 and 3.45 to 4.45. On Wednesdays, 2.45 to 345 okay and so so you you get paid uh it's it's not a ton of hours but it's it's sort of a lifestyle thing if you want this you know it it works for certain people obviously it might not work for everybody's schedules and what they need in a career um so so let's say i'm I'm interested i want to be a crossing guard what do i gotta do well the first thing you want to do is get on the website so it's ocso.com once you go on the website then you will look up in where it says job offers or job opportunities. You click on that. Then you click the school crossing guard uh, name. And right there will tell you, here's where you apply. Click here. You click there, create a profile, and start your application. And we're always looking for crossing guards. I have been here doing this for 30 somewhat years, and we've never had a zero vacancy. So we have training Every single month, we try to fill a class with 15 people. Okay. So we really need people right away. So so when you apply, and, and I assume you, you look through the application and make sure they're they're okay, uh, there's a background check as well. Yeah. So the first thing we do, we, just, we do a phone interview. Make sure they understand what is required as a crossing guard before they continue forward. Once they understand that, then we go ahead and do a background check. Once the background check gets back, then we go ahead and schedule them for the fo- actual personal interview with me and fingerprints when they leave here with the interview they will leave here with a letter saying they've been accepted for the position this is your next appointment which is the medical and then the next uh two things that we have to do is six hour training and four hour orientation okay and normally if they get that done either of that their wednesday and thursday
Thursday, that following Monday they start working. Oh, you get them right on the road. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So you said there's a there was like a physical test as well. I, I assume it's not like being a deputy where you got to do push ups and run no, miles, no, but no, but no. you got to be able to at least get out there and, and be able to stop traffic. What's the physical test part? Well, they do a regular physical, but then they also do what we call the physical ability test, which is stepping up a, a, a step ladder to make sure they can get out, up and down a curb, that they're able to walk a distance of 42 seconds with their hands up, like if they're holding the stop sign, and staying there for 42 seconds, that's how long the light will take for them to get the kids across. Okay. And then walking a distance, I don't know how many seconds is that, but they do that as well. Okay, so so like you said, you got to have, you got to be able to do this job. Correct. So, so... In the background check, I talked about uh, I, last week. We talked to uh, um, Sergeant Steve Harrelson in recruiting. We talked all about deputies and how you recruit them, and we talked a little bit about backgrounds and and basically you couldn't do a lot of bad things and be mm-hmm. a deputy. Uh, I assume it's kind of like that here with the with the crossing guard. Definitely, they're working for the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and okay. we want to make sure there are people that you know got good morals that are going to be dealing with our children and going to pre- they're going to they're going to perform their jobs but also uh, behave in a manner that's respectful to not only the community, but the children that they're safeguarding. Yeah. And we also talked about, you don't have to be perfect if you have no. a speeding ticket or, I mean, Correct. there's certain offenses in life that we all get. I mean, I've had seatbelt tickets. Mm-hmm. I've had speeding yeah. tickets. Doesn't mean yeah, I'm a bad Yeah, we look person. at that, but that's not a serious violation. Yes. You know, we do, you know, we don't look at that too much. Yeah. Know, so yeah. don't feel like just because you might have something wrong, you know, you can still apply. Yeah, and, and all yeah. we ask is that you be truthful on the application. Yes. With all the questions, answer them truthfully, and we'll move from there. All right. So let's say I, I pass the background check. I can I can step up a ladder and, and walk for 40 seconds with my hands up in the air. Uh, what's the training like? Tell me about the training. So the training is a six-hour training. Uh, the first thing we cover is like a classroom setting with a PowerPoint presentation. There's two videos. There's one video that's children in traffic. So you get to see how children perceive traffic. They're not adults. They're little kids. They have certain developments. They don't see like adults see. They don't hear like adults see. So it kind of gives you that perspective. The other thing that they do is um, the other video is the actual procedure on how to do different types of crossings those with a traffic signal how to push the button and work with the traffic with the pedestrian signal those that have uh stop signs you know a mid block crossing with a, a school zone of 20 miles an hour what to do and then once they get all that training done in the classroom then we go outside into the actual parking lot we have to do at least an hour or two outside where they actually do the practice of how to do it blow the whistle put up their hand do the eye contact with the drivers what to tell the students they actually practice is that what do you tell us um, dude what, what, what do well, you tell the them? first thing you say you know hello i'm Burtis. i'm going to be your crossing guard i want you to do a few things for me before you step out because i want to keep you safe first i need you to get off your bikes and please walk them across do not run across i need you to stay within the crosswalk you see those lines you need to stay within those crosswalk and then i'm going to go out and stop traffic once i stop traffic i'm going to say two words look and go ah. that will remind you to look left right left again and over your shoulders to make sure the cars have stopped and then you can go. Now, don't follow me out. Wait and wait behind this line right here. So the crossing guard goes out, blows the whistle. That's a audio to the driver. They put out the stop sign, which is a visual. So that's two things before they step out. Okay. They put the other hand to the traffic, left hand traffic, and then they step out. And then they get into the middle of the street facing the intersection and then turn to the kids and say, look and go. All and that's right. When the kids go. They cannot leave the center of the street. A lot of drivers, they want to go through in between. The guard needs to stay in the center of the street until the last child has reached the opposite curb. And then they could leave the intersection. Okay. And so it's different for a, a uh, intersection where there's a light there. Correct. So if there's, if there's not a light, you do all that. Is it the same? No, way? it's the same thing. Oh, okay. Even, even if the traffic just stopped, we still have to do those things because we know not only here in Florida, <laughs> but, but everybody mostly, likes to like. run a red light. Everybody's distracted with the phone, kids in the back seat, eating, drinking, shaving, putting on makeup. All those distractions that we really need to leave at home. Yes. Because we really need to keep our eyes out for these kids. Yeah. And yeah. our cr- crossing guards that are out there first before those kids cross. So so that's that's the six-hour class. That's a six-hour class. Okay. And then they leave uh, with a letter saying they've they've succeeded. They take a, uh, at the end when we come back inside, the final thing we do is a 30-word 
uh, question test. Okay. You have to pass the test with at least 30 a, question test. Yeah. Okay. 30 question test with at least a 60, uh, 76. Okay. Um, 176. Um, you said there was a four hour. Four and then, and then the next day they come back for four hour orientation. And that's where we go over all the logist, you know, administrative paperwork, get their ID copies of their driver's license, okay. all that other stuff. Yeah. The HR doing. stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. And then finally after there, we take them to the back, they get all the equipment, vest, Glove, whistle, stop paddle, ID, raincoat, winter jacket. You get all this if mm -hmm. you're if you're in a hat. The okay, in a hat. And you're yes. supposed to wear all that all the time, or well, depending on the weather. We give them more than they're required to wear because we want to give them as much as we can to make them visible out there. But by state guidelines, all they need is a vest, a glove. I mean, vest, whistle, and a stop paddle. We give them the the. The gloves, which we want them to wear. Are they white? They're, Are they like white? No, they're, okay. they're yellow. <laughs> <Okay>. Bright. <laughs> Everything is bright that they wear because we want them to be seen. Yeah. And also um, school can start kind of early sometimes. And right. so you got to make sure. And, and it can be foggy. It can be rainy. It can be dark. And so right. it's probably not as dark for elementary school kids like it is for high school kids. Right. But they still got to be visible. Definitely. And they also have to wear that. They have to have that ID yeah. visible. It would assure. It makes the parents assured that. Wow, this person is working and they work for the sheriff's office. So yeah. they have to have that display at all time. So uh, let's say I pass all that. I, I'm, I'm ready to be a crossing guard. Do, do I get to kind of decide where I get to work or do you assign the location? Good question. Uh, we try to put people be within five miles of their home. For two hours a day, it's breakup of the day. We don't want them to go too far. So this is a community job. We want people from the community to come forth to do the jobs in their community. Okay. Um. People are not going to drive, you know, 20, 30 minutes to go to a crossing one hour and come back home and go back. They're not going to do that, especially with the traffic here in Florida. Yeah. So we really need people to come forth from their community to do the job. So we keep them within five miles of radius. Now, if they're willing to drive, we will have them do it. But normally we like to keep them within their five mile radius. Is there a part of town that is uh, always, I mean, I know you said there's always a need. We're always in need of crossing guards. But are there certain parts of town where they're more needed? Yeah, there, there's, you know, there's just areas that we don't get as many applicants as we wish. Um, you know, we got the Windermere area, Hunters Creek area, Dr. Phillips area. Those areas, we don't get many applicants. So okay. it's really hard to fill our vacancies. So so if you are if you live in that area, you know. Come for it. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we need we'll, ex we'll hire you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I ask this to everybody who works at the sheriff's office. How did you end up at the sheriff's office? Because you're a civilian, right? I am a civilian. So how did you end up here at the sheriff's office? So I came in 1986. Okay, that's okay. From New York. I think like half of our staff was I from know, right? New York. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, I came here, I took a cut and pay. I had a son who was one year old and I started working for the sheriff's office in the records department. Did you work in law enforcement in New York? Never. Okay. I worked in insurance. Okay. <laughs> I worked in insurance and I wanted to do insurance when I got here, but this was the first job that came across and I'm very happy. I've been here 33 years, so you can tell that I've enjoyed my, my career here. Yes. So, um, I started in records and about two years later, I, I posted for this position as a clerk in human resources for my boss, who was the school crossing guard coordinator at the time. His name was Jack Breslin. He was a marvelous man who just trained me. And he said, one day when I leave, you're going to be the next person. And, and that's how it happened. And I, I'm truly blessed because I've never thought I would, I never aspired for this, but I guess God had different plans yeah. for me. So, so you've you always, know? so you've been in this department for how many years? So I've been here 86. So it's, 88 since 1980 so almost 30 years mm -hmm. so you, you've seen a lot of crossing guards yeah i know <laughs> i have a crossing guard who's been with us 36 years i was gonna so i was gonna get to that at some mm -hmm. point but since you brought it up tell me about this uh tell me who's i assume this is the longest she's the longest and you know i i was selling in the back to school training i said if she resigns then the next one is going to be um janice gay but our 33, 36 years is Ann Craft. Okay. She's had the that number and she's the number one. Um, where, she, where, tell me about Ann. Where, where is she Ann at? works at West, West Oaks. And the sheriff went out last year for School Crossing Guard Appreciation Day, actually this year in February. And he went out there to visit her. 
and she was just tickle pink <laughs> see him and he did the crossing for her and let her just stand on the side and watch and so that was really nice where's west oaks for people that west don't oaks know? is in the pine hills area up there near dosha road between hiawassee and apopka violin road okay all mm-hmm. right so but and she just must love being a crossing she guard. loves it she does two schools she goes from there to gotha middle school okay just up the street but we have do we have a lot of crossing guards that have done this for every year um, yeah, you know, I think our majority, like we have eight people that have been with us the 18 years, is the next lady. And then we have 15, 12, 10, the majority are within three and five. Okay. All yeah. right. So there is some turnover, but you yes. do have some that stay on cause they, mm-hmm. they like doing it. Yeah. We lose about, I would say like maybe 3% every year. What, 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 so Anne, what does she like about it? What, what do you think she likes about it? being a crossing guard she just loves the kids i yeah. mean she's seen them grown i mean they <laughs> I come assume, to her i mean her yeah <laughs> they come to her and say hey remember me and she's like no and like yeah you used to cross me when i was a little kid <laughs> yeah so she she just loves it she just loves being out there with the kids and and the and the good thing is she has a good rapport with the principal too and the teachers and all that so so let's say i'm a driver now so we'll take this from the other side i mm-hmm. mean what are some of the the tips you have about being around crossing guards i assume just just pay attention and stop when they tell you to stop. I think people just need to be patient. You know, it, you know, every driver out there knows we have traffic in Florida. Everybody knows the school has started. So slow down. Uh, get out. Leave your house even earlier if you know you're going to be stuck in traffic. And be courteous to our crossing guards. They're just doing their job. Yeah. They're just trying to get those little kiddos across the street safely to and from school. And we're just stopping you for a few minutes. And I'm sorry if they backed up the traffic, but the kids are first. They say, well, why don't they just let us go through and do it afterwards? Well, kids are impatient and they're unpredictable. And if you hold them too long, they're going to dart out into the street. And that's what we don't want to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to ask you about that. I mean, with, with the kids, I mean, how, what do you teach the crossing guards to how do, how do you teach them to interact with the kids? Well, in the training, we go, we go over the procedure and what to tell the kids. Um, I tell them to conversate with the kids. Tell them why you're telling them to get off the bikes. Don't just say get off your bikes and walk them. Say, hey, get off your bikes, walk them. And the reason I'm telling you this is because if a car is coming, it's easier for you to push the bike out of the way and run than trying to get off your bike and then you get hit. So, you know, try to explain a little further of why you're asking them to do the different things you're asking. Well, what's the biggest challenge of finding new crossing guards? Um, I don't know. I think it's the hours because they're split up. Mm-hmm. I think it's the pay, you know, even though we just got them a raise. Uh, our sheriff has given a raise every year. Um, um, they find other jobs that have maybe benefits. Um, so those are the challenges. Yeah. Oh, well, how do you convince people to want to be a crossing guard? You talked a little bit earlier. It was kind of like a community job. It's a community job and we have trainers. We have, I have eight trainers wh- who are assigned to a specific area. So they check their guards on a daily basis to make sure they're there. They're doing their job as trained by state guidelines and they go out and exchange their equipment so they could always have fresh, bright equipment. Um, so they go out and recruit, they go, they get a weekly vacancy list. So they know where their vacancies are and they go and recruit in those areas. They go to the school, they go to, you know, seven elevens, they go to a community home, um, clubhouses. Mm -hmm. They go to, they get really creative. (laughs) They go to so many different places. Some lady goes to a hair, a hair salon because these ladies get their hair done at least every week. So, you know, I mean, as creative as they can get. So we do try to get the word out as much as we can. So you, you've been doing this 30 some odd years. What's changed over those 30 years, you think, for you with this job? Hmm. You got me there. <laughs> um, ah, I guess we've we've progressed with with technology. Um, you know, our trainers have uh, better like they have computers now, they have phones. Before they didn't have phones, so there was no way of them communicating with the office. Uh, so yeah, uh, those kinds of technology stuff. How about the number of crossing guards? I oh, s- every <laughs> year, yes. Um, well, you know, as you know, this year we had three new schools open new. Yeah. So every time, every year, they 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 add more schools. So we have to add more crossings. So our numbers. I remember far back as. Having 188 crossings. Okay. And <laughs> and now we have 454. I mean, that's like three times or at yes. least two and a half times yes. the amount. Yeah. And I remember paying as low as 
150. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, we have progressed in pay, uh, how many guards we have out there, you know, what the type of equipment we give them, you know, et cetera, and et cetera. So, uh, so now I'm, I'm thinking you, you mentioned the pay, which is like, you know, it's, it's a job for just a few hours a day. And so once again, it's not going to be the most lucrative career. It's not supposed to be, but I think about, uh, you know, like, like around the holidays and stuff Do do the kids and do the moms and dads, do they bring the crossing guards presents and stuff? They sure do. <laughs> you know, there's some areas that are very, you know, festive. Yes. <laughs> and then there's others that don't do nothing. Not so fast. So for that, call said, them, uh, you know, Grinches and, uh, yeah. <laughs> With that said, uh, remember, School Crossing Guard Appreciation Day is always the first Friday of February. Ah. So be appreciative of your guards. <laughs> but yes, a lot of our guards are loved and by the community. Um, they'll go out and give them presents. They give them gift cards. One guy, he worked for like a private school and he said one day he... He made out with five, 400 bucks Wow! with gift cards and cash. I was yeah. like, wow, I'm going to leave my job and go do your <laughs> job. Um, but I'm joking. But um, yeah, those types of things. But also th- what they've done is in the winter months, they'll stop and give them hot cocoa, oh, hot okay. coffee and give them water in the summer. You know, so there's a lot of nice people out there in the community that treat our crossing guards really, really great. That's a, that's a good thing to talk about because, you know, the, the weather here is a little bit different than other parts in the country. Is, is there something, especially in the summer months, is there something they do specific with what they wear, their hats or their, I mean, just, just stay cool. Yeah, just try to stay school, cool as, as much as possible. I mean, they're allowed to wear tank tops, shorts. I mean, we don't specifically tell them any specific uniform. We can't provide them with uniform because of the attrition, the amounts they come in and come out. But but we allow them to wear whatever is going to make them comfortable. But okay. they just have to have their equipment on to be seen. And it's not too cold in the winter like it is up north. <laughs> no, but they do have a nice bulky jacket that oh. they are given by the agency oh okay yeah, so they so get they a winter jacket that. and the raincoat yeah. all right yeah that's that's uh that's very kind of us to mm-hmm. to give that out to them yes um there, i don't know i don't know if i there's a woman i'm gonna ask you i don't know if you know this or not but i live like i said i live in unincorporated orange county but i live like right across the street from uh uh, the city of Orlando. And so I don't know if she's a city of Orlando one, but there's a woman by my house and maybe everybody sort of recognizes whether or not you have kids or not, that there's a crossing guard there. And I will say it's been the same woman for like four years. Like she is there every morning during school and she wears a cowboy hat and yep. she wears cowboy boots mm-hmm. and she's just a character. I wave to her every morning. <laughs> and once again, I don't even have kids, that is but so I think she like kind of knows the neighborhood and she knows the routine of the neighborhood. Is, is that pretty typical? You know, it's funny that you say that they know the routine. Uh, yes, that's typical. And what we have gotten is our crossing guards are the extra eyes and ears in our community. Mm-hmm. And they have reported things to us that have helped us uh, get people out, out of the streets that are not, good people okay so they report things on a day-to-day basis that they see and hear because they have been trained to whatever you see you say something if you see something you say something and they're very good about that i was going to ask you about that so let's say you're a crossing guard and and maybe a driver goes through a stop sign and they shouldn't have or or decides that they they gotta get going and they're gonna blow through your uh your sign standing up there what does a crossing guard do? What's their what's their job or what's their role then? They report it to our office. They they do report all those you know repeat offenders that are running through the red light, people that are constantly going through their stop sign while they're in the middle of the street crossing kids in between the kid and them. Uh, it just it's just a lot of crazy stuff that people do and they have no consideration for the children and the guard. And I'm like, wow, come on, let's just take a little bit of time, you know, chill out. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you do you know off the top of your head? Let's say I blow through a a, a crosswalk while the it's okay if you don't know the answer, but if a crossing guard's there, is, is it a ticket? Is it a fine? There, there, there are fines. Yeah, I okay. just don't know what those fines That's okay. are. They're, they, whatever they are, they should be a lot because it's dangerous. And it like is you dangerous. said, not just for our crossing guard, but for the kids too. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, a kid might see that the crossing guard's out there and just start going. Which mm-hmm. you know, whether or not they listen to him saying, "Well, wait for me," they might not. And then you have a car coming that thinks they can either beat it, like like they shouldn't, or they can sort of weave through. It's exactly. very dangerous. So yes. whatever the ticket or fine is it, it, it should probably be double well and you, they got to remember that remember that they're 
the texting and, and on the phones was a secondary offense. Yes. And that has just changed. So they need to really slow down because our sheriff's office will be giving tickets to those um, drivers that are in the in school zones or oh, yeah. school areas and texting on the phones or talking on the phones. Yeah. Um, that, I, they need I, to put it down. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I wanted to ask you, let's say let's say I'm a crossing guard and, and I'm not feeling so well one day. What, what do you do? Is there a substitute? Well, we try to hire subs, but we always have vacancies. So that's always a challenge. But if we do happen to have a sub for that school, we call the sub and the sub will cover. If we do not have a sub, then we call our communication center so they can dispatch a deputy during that time. Okay. So if, if that's a crosswalk that normally has a crossing guard and for some reason that person couldn't make it today, it's not just going to go empty. Somebody's going to be there, either a sub or one of our deputies will fill in for that day Correct. or however long it, it takes for the Correct. person to come yes. back. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I think that's all I got for crossing guards. So I, I, I do want to say, and, and, I, and I hope we made a point to say this, be careful, like just be careful out there and be patient yes. because these, these crossing guards are, are doing this probably because they like this job a lot. Out of the goodness of their heart. Yeah. Every yeah. one of them to say they get hired, they say, I don't do it for the money. I do it because I just want to keep our kids safe and I want to do, be part of the community. I want to be a positive influence in my community. And that's why they do it. How about you? Do you ever get out and, and uh, I, sub? I do. I do. Yes. Uh, our trainers do as well. If our trainer is going out and he sees a cru crucial area where the guard didn't show up and nobody else showed up, he'll get out of the car and go cross kids. Okay. Well, yes. good. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us here on. Thank you Behind for the, the opportunity. Star. Yeah. So, so Bertus, um, if somebody wants to be a crossing guard, go to OCSO.com, fill out the application. Somebody will get back to you uh, because we need crossing guards. Our yes. community needs crossing guards. It's yes. not just us. Yes. And if and if they put in the application and they submit it, they hit that submit button. Don't forget to hit the submit button. <laughs> Otherwise, we won't see it on our side. Um, give it a give it a couple of days and call our office. 407-836-4082. All right. And if you see a crossing guard out there and, and maybe you don't have kids or maybe you do, Eh, maybe around the holidays, maybe maybe give them a little something to, to thank them for all the work they do. So uh, thank you all for listening, and we will see you next time on Behind the Star. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to Behind the Star. You can find us wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Until next time, I'm John Bustecker, and this is Behind the Star. Behind the Star.